Good evening and welcome back to SCTV, Simpson College's first student-run weekly newscast. I'm Jake Brent. And I'm Morgan Flynn. It's great to be with you. It's good to have you here, Morgan. This morning in Black Box, Simpson Athletics announced a rebrand of the Simpson logo. The rebrand was an eight-month process of the athletics department working with an outside firm. Simpson hosted a highly anticipated launch party. Here is logo reveal. <laughs> The logos will go into full effect in the fall and will replace the current branding. Look for the new logo at the 50-yard line on the football field and behind the plate for softball and baseball. Merchandise with the new logo is available on Simpsons Nike store on the Simpson Athletics website. As of today, none of the old branding will be used for printing. Wow, what an exciting time for Simpson Athletics. We know the Simpsons speech and debate team has won a national championship this year, but there is another team on campus that has brought back a national championship to Indianola. That's right. The Simpsons Shooting Sports Club brought home their first national title. I caught up with the team to discuss the accomplishment. The Simpsons Shooting Sports team is national champions after winning the Division III All-American title at the ACUI Clay Target Collegiate Championships in San Antonio. <laughs> Kylie Tierney and Braden Paxson also both took home individual national titles. Ever since being a kid, I've always dreamed of being a national champion, and for it to actually become something is, is amazing. Being able to work so hard for all year round, and ever since I started shooting, I've always pushed to be, become the best, and for it to finally happen, it's just it's truly amazing. It's always an honor to see the athletes succeed in reaching their pinnacle at, and as a coach, anytime you can see uh, the athletes have that kind of success, it's very emotionally gratifying. The team overcame the adversity of winter to win. I think the biggest part of competing in Northern states is that we have a limited season just due to the weather and snow, whereas um, a lot of Southern schools will be shooting all year round, and so they're coming into nationals hot. Whereas we take off two months, um, and we're limited to inside, inside practice, um, and then like three weeks of outdoor shooting. The first day, it was super windy. Uh, conditions were really bad. Teams were struggling left and right. But for us to be able to stay in it and tell ourselves mentally, it's windy, scores aren't going to be as good, just stay in it. We were able to overcome the wind. An ingredient found in nearly every championship team? Chemistry. That's one of my main reasons why I love this team. Um, they're From day one, they were a family to me. We all make fun of each other, we all have fun, we all laugh. We, If somebody's struggling, we'll boost each other's morales, we'll watch over each other's shoulders, We'll help each other improve with our games and stuff, even with school. We keep it light. I'm kind of a lighthearted individual. I like to keep things, you know, even keel and try and keep everybody laughing and smiling and having a good time. But when it's time to uh, put the nose to the grindstone, I expect them to do that. And they've really grasped that concept. We're all about having fun um, while we're getting stuff done and taking care of business. The team reached their goal of a title this year, which means there's now a bigger goal in mind. Before I came into college, I wanted to have... Uh, four rings, uh, four national titles was my goal at the very beginning, and I'm on track right now. Simpson has really grown its shooting program, uh, especially with um, trap shooting becoming an upcoming sport um, in high school and then as well as um, in junior colleges. So I 
see this program expanding, not only just on, um, on our campus, but across the state and through different schools as well. I think we start building a dynasty now. I think this is not just a one-time thing. This now becomes an expectation for the class coming in. We're only really losing one senior out of our core group. So we're going to have the exact same shooters coming back. We're getting some new shooters coming in. And I think that's what our goal is, is to put another, another championship on the wall and, and keep striving to build a dynasty here at Simpson. For SCTV, Jake Brend. Last week was the first campus day since 2019 after a two-year hiatus due to COVID-19. The Simpson community returned by raking leaves and landscaping on a day with no classes. Ethan Humble has more from campus day's return. From raking to bagging up sticks and laying down some mulch, Simpson College and the Indianola community got a makeover last Wednesday. And that's because after a two-year hiatus, Campus Day has returned, thanks largely in part to SGA Organization Committee Chair Corey Torres. I kind of got the position by default because I was the only senior um, and everybody else on, like the exec team on SGA had not experienced a Campus Day. So I was the only one with some previous knowledge of knowledge of how it works and with hundreds of people participating the job wasn't an easy one i will have to say it was pretty stressful having to deal with signups and order like over 600 t-shirts and then assign over 600 people to like where they're supposed to be and like having them check in but it would appear the service was a success our work was a lot of yard work so raking leaves raking sticks um we were near the BPAC. Along with many campus beautification teams, 15 groups were sent around the community, including the swim team's visit to Kayakota Humane Society. Uh, the swim team went to Kayakota. We went and we helped out with the animals there. They didn't really have like a whole bunch of stuff that we needed to do, so we kind of just got to hold cats and play with the puppies that were there, uh, which was really fun. Along with the three hours of service time, Campus Day included four food trucks free of charge to students, among other fun activities. I, I definitely went to the food trucks, got one of everything, because they were all super great and Simpson was paying for it, so why wouldn't I, you know? Both the first year and senior agree. Campus Day makes Simpson unique. I've never seen this at any college back in Texas that I'm aware of. I'm not sure that any colleges did that. This is this was really cool. It was really cool to see because I've been working on service projects my whole life. I go out and I just do stuff for the communities and everything. And so it was really fun to be able to carry that tradition here as well. I think it says a lot that our education is more more than just classroom. It, we're focused on like experiential learning as well. We, we teach the students that we are about giving back to the community. We are about uh, becoming better as people. We aren't just here to learn how to land a job. We're here to become better people. For SCTV, Ethan Humble. Seniors from the graphic design department have gotten the opportunity to showcase their work. Katie Burns talked to some of the seniors and got video of their designs. On April 22nd, seniors Jordi Triana Vasquez and Jacob Cool will be presenting their senior seminar project at the new art gallery in Howard Art Studio. Graphic design, senior graphic design students, an opportunity to demonstrate all of the knowledge they've gathered over their four years of college in design and um, you know try to do work that represents that. Most students were able to have creative control of their projects. What's really cool is that me and Jordy are the first ones in the new uh, art gallery. Um, so we're the inaugural exhibition. Um, but what I like about it personally for me the most is um, getting to work on a, a project for the entire semester um, and then getting to put it up in a grandiose scale essentially. Um, that it's not kind of just work on a computer that I turned in for an assignment. Um, it's a little bit more than that. My project, it is hand-drawn designs and photographic designs. And the themes, they vary for the hand-drawn designs. They're mostly based on uh, experiences that most people go through, but I, spe uh, I speci sp like specifically chose love. Um, and for the photographic designs, I chose to uh, base them off of my travel 
they're also going to be on hoodies and bags and stickers so you know has a has a different element to than just being on the computer and so you can actually have like a tangible item with the design on it they both have an individual artistic sensibility and artistic vision and i think they should work towards trying to maintain that personal vision while at the same time making getting a job and staying uh, in a successful career for sdtv katie burns for this week's highlights, we were planning on having footage from the golf tournament and the softball doubleheader that were supposed to take place yesterday, but both got postponed due to the weather. But we will still have tennis highlights from the weekend. Women's tennis on Sunday morning taking on St. Mary. Kennedy Wright forces a pop-up and Anna Shiwe puts it away with the overhead, but they lose doubles and a tie break. Anna Wanick and Emily King at one doubles. Wanick exchanges volleys and then puts it away towards the camera. They get a big win, 8-3 at one doubles. King now in singles, goes cross court, and then puts the return down the line. She wins in singles also. Donnie Kinghorn rallies and hits a drop shot at the net. St. Mary's player can't get to it. She wins her match in a close tiebreaker also. She hits another overhead for the point back corner, but she falls in straight sets. Bella Tranquilino hits a drop shot Backhand cross court winner. What a shot. She, however, loses. Now Anna Wanick smashes the overhead. She wins again in straight sets, but the storm fall overall. 5 4. The men at home on Monday taking Han Ko. Peter Walkowitz goes down the line, but they couldn't get the win at two doubles. Three doubles. Drake Downard sticks the volley, gets the point, but they lose 8 2. Good crowd on hand. In singles, Chase Henry hits a passing shot. Sam Copel can't get to it. Henry wins his match. Downard now at five singles, returns to the net and puts the volley away. He gets a big win. Caleb Baskin has at one, hits it past John Lansing. He played him tough, but couldn't get the win. Now the play of the day, Peter Walkwitz in a rally, runs to the back corner, flits, flicks the backhand lob over his head and gets the point. You can see the reaction. He gets the point, but Co wins the match overall, 7-2. The baseball team struggled, continued with a sweep by Buena Vista, losing more, two more one-run games. The track team had a, a good weekend in Pella, with the men finishing third and the women finishing fourth. Max Cleveland, Brennan Goodbout, James Murray, and Ayers Forbes all won their respective events. Men's tennis dropped a match against Nebraska Wesleyan that could have gone either way. Women's tennis, as we just saw, lost to Truman 7-2, but Anna Wanick won again in singles and doubles with Emily King. She took home ARC Player of the Week honors. Golf finished six at Boss Landon, and baseball lost another one-run game. They look to get back on track this weekend against Co. That's going to be all for us this week. As always, a big thanks to Professor Carpinelli, Professor Siebert, and Professor Steppen, and everybody behind the scenes that makes this newscast possible. Just two weeks left after today in the semester. We'll be back next Wednesday, but until then, you stay classy, Simpson.